Hello, I'm Paul Michael Glazer, and you are watching Mr. Media. Today on Mr. Media, I'll talk to actress Paige Howard, one of the stars of the new film Cheesecake Casserole. You can see it yourself in the comfort of your own home via video on demand, Amazon.com, or iTunes on July 3rd. Stick around, there'll be nothing cheesy about this show. Mr. Media is recorded live before a studio audience of lemon meringue pie fans who will always accept the slate of Nate and Al's finest cherry cheesecake in a pinch in the new new media capital of the world, St. Petersburg, Florida. Yes, yes, Paige Howard is one of those Howards. Sister of Bryce, who played Gwen Stacy in Spider-Man 3, niece of Clint, granddaughter of Rance, and, yep, daughter of Ron and Cheryl. Uh, that had to be said, I'm told, because Paige hasn't accrued enough screen credits yet where you will drop what you're doing when you hear the name Paige Howard. But, if you have time, take a look at her performance in a new film called Cheesecake Casserole. She plays Jess, one of four friends about to graduate college who get together for one more last girly blowout. It's a weekend of food, booze, boys, and boy talk. Each, woman, each of the women has a tangled narrative, and for Paige Howard's Jess, there's something emotionally fraught bubbling beneath the surface of this beautiful redhead. Now, Cheesecake Casserole might as well be called Four Chicks and a DB. Now, that's douchebag. Yeah. <laughs> because one of the girls has been followed to the getaway by her boyfriend, Rudy, played by Rocco Nugent. Now, does that name sound familiar? Well, it should. Rocco has a pretty famous parent himself, rock star and professional tea party loudmouth Ted Nugent. No disrespect. Cheesecake Casserole premieres July 3rd nationwide on Video On Demand. You can also download it on MrMedia.com by way of Amazon.com or via iTunes. And all that said, Paige Howard, welcome to Mr. Media. Thank you. It's so good to have you here. We've 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 actually had plenty of time today to get to know each other back and forth. Yeah. Yes, so. we have. <laughs> so it's it's uh, it's great to have you. Now, uh this movie, I got to ask you, it my my perception is this is a pretty big opportunity for you. Well, yeah, it absolutely um it it, it is and it was when I uh we filmed it oh a couple years ago oh, and wow. Um, but I had, when I, when I found out that I got the part, um, I had been auditioning for it for, for a while and, um, and it had been something that I, I really, I, I was like, oh, this would be such a fun thing to do and something that I feel like, um, I could really, I, I feel like I could, I could bring a lot to it. And also I, it would just be sort of this, this bottomless pit of, you know, people to learn from and um and you know it's in a wonderful past and um uh and when i finally got there and uh we we you know got got to filming and i i could not have possibly imagined that that it would be as it would be like all that i had hoped for but on steroids it was it was an incredible, incredible experience, and I hope it. You know, I, I definitely, I, I, I hope everyone goes and sees it because it's just, it's there. There was so much heart that went into this film from, from, you know, from every, every, every corner of every, you know, set that we worked on, every hour of every day that we were working. It was amazing. Well, now for those of us who do not work in your business, we lose track sometimes of the fact that the movies. <laughs> they're not made yesterday. It's not like, oh, hey, you got together with some friends yesterday or last week, made a movie, and you're releasing it this week. It, it was, as you said, a couple of years ago. So put it in perspective for me. What had you already been in by this time? I'm saying, I'm thinking oh. it was still pretty new. 
Yeah, very new. Very new. Um, cheesecake casserole was the was the I I I, I did Adventureland, um, and then and then I did Virgin Alexander, and um, and then right after Virgin Alexander was uh, cheesecake casserole. Mm. Um, but uh, you know, I I kind of got my feet wet a bit in in Adventureland. But uh, Virgin Alexander and um, and Cheesecake, they were, I you know, I, I was nervous going in. <laughs> Virgin Alexander. <laughs> um, yeah, I was, I was really nervous going in. Um, uh, I'm sure a lot of that was adrenaline, but um, just kind of, I was, I was also incredibly excited. But um, you know, I at this point in time, I hadn't, other than Adventureland, I hadn't seen myself ever on film. Mm. Um, I didn't. I, I was. I was curious about sort of, um, of like, are the choices that I'm making, or is this is this coming across? Is this re- I don't because I, I I hadn't seen it with my own eyes, um, and I got really lucky with with all of those films actually because um, it was everyone was so nurturing and really really understanding of the fact that I'd like ask a million questions <laughs> like, and you know they they were just. It was it was it was it was amazing. So I I, I yeah it was it was the third film I did and um and uh, you know just be getting and after that I got a lot more comfortable um uh, or throughout that that process and um and uh, it was like it, it was just I, I feel I you know I, I I feel like I've done something right. I must have. <laughs> You know, because I got very, very lucky with all of those films. Obviously made a good impression on somebody. And I, I'm going to point out something you and I know, that uh, we, we started to do the interview earlier today, and then we had to put it off a while. And the strangest thing happened. Uh, we were only going to talk about cheesecake casserole today. <laughs> and in the mail, literally, between the time we started our first conversation and this interview, uh, I actually received a, a copy of Virgin Alexander. So we will come back and talk about that. I, yeah. haven't, I haven't gotten to see it. I, I did see Cheesecake, but uh, we will talk about that before, before our time is over for yeah. people who may be wondering what we're referring yes. to. Um, so uh, Cheesecake, uh, you've got these four, uh, you know, uh, not to kiss up to the guests, but four beautiful women uh, in this movie. It's definitely uh, a chick flick kind of thing. Um, it looks like there's a lot of comedy in the film and there's a lot of drama. There's a lot of emotion. It, it, it looks like, though, it was probably a lot of fun to be on that set. Oh, my gosh. It was such a fun set. I mean, we, we laughed the entire time. I, I, I mean, there was crying, of course, but, like, we laughed the entire I, I, all the, the Like, the four of us... Um, immediately got along so well, which is such a relief because, you know. Yeah. It could go either <laughs> way, right? I know, girl, you know, I don't know. Um, uh, and they just, they're, they're all like so wonderful. And it was, it was such a relaxed set, um, but, but extremely efficient, which is, you know, I think it, it just really allowed for us all to, to enjoy the experience. Um, and uh, and also really feel like we were safe and um, able to to jump into uh, into our roles and and see what sort of came up. So it was it was, it was amazing. I got to ask. So much fun. Oh, I'm sorry. I got to ask yeah. you a question. There is a, a scene, and it's early in the movie, so I'm not giving away anything. I don't think, but there is a scene early on that involves a giant <clears throat> cockroach. And, mm-hmm. and I, I wondered, was that uh, in the script, or was that somebody uh, introducing that uh, off script? No, no, no. That was um, that was in the script. Uh, but we, the way it was filmed, uh, was um, I think the first time we did it, it was like, uh, we we just sort of filmed it like I I didn't know that that you know they were gonna pull that whole thing and um and uh and I thought I was just having a sleeping scene <laughs> and um and uh and then they they but they had like planted the cockroach into the into the script and I just didn't and then um you know and then I like freaked out of course um because it's like a huge cockroach yeah it's it like, was big it's massive yeah it's not like something that you're like oh whoa I mean I'm you know I'm at, at a, like at the family barn and 
and there's a there's a cockroach. It's like it's like a ty- it's like it's like a it's a vicious. It's like sign. a co-star. Yeah, yeah, it is. <laughs> Literally, that 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 cockroach stole that scene like 150. Um, percent But no, we had a we had a blast with that actually. And then when I I was like, oh, okay, this is good. Um, uh, we just kind of, we like yeah we 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 uh we were all like hopping around like our pajamas anyways for the scene so we just it was fun so was there was anyone uh uh was anyone particularly close to their character in the film and was anyone completely the antithesis of their character from your time with them um i would say that i think all of us have have bits and pieces um, that we that we you know 100% relate to about about these girls. Just going into it, um, uh, there are definitely differences, but um, uh, the, I think I, I mean. I, She's not like running off with like all the. She's, she's you know, she she's like the most like committed person, and um and Margot doesn't so much have that going for her. So it was that she she had a little bit of something to kind of play with there, but um, but uh, I think it was more more than anything just kind of us all having to like look at you know different phases maybe we've all experienced to some degree in our own lives, mm-hmm. and um. And and kind of like take a second look at that, <laughs> and um and bring and figure out sort of where do these characters like exist in us, mm-hmm. and um and then and then uh you know how to like kind of dig that up and and get out and play and um and uh but because I, I think we can all for they're very relatable very relatable so um I mentioned. Uh... Rocco uh, Nugent before in the introduction and I didn't realize until after I had seen the film I didn't make the connection the Nugent connection the Ted Nugent connection Um, he is uh, I mean when he's on screen you really want to hate him I mean it's just uh, you know I mean but you were telling me earlier that he was a, a very nice guy he's the sweetest guy he's so I mean he is playful and energetic um, but he's just the sweetest guy. He is like, he does, he has like such a sweet heart. He does. And I, he's and I, funny. He's funny and he's, you know, he's got a lot to say, but, um, but he's like, he's just, he's like a bear. He's like a warm, like cuddly bear. He's just sweet. <laughs> he sounds a lot like his dad was as a young man. He was just full of energy, just bursting. I mean, that, bursting. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that was the thing about Ted. I, I, I was a, I was a pretty young guy when, uh, when Ted uh, first hit the scene, uh, cat scratch fever and uh, yeah. all that stuff, and uh, you know he just was bursting with energy, and he was funny, and he was just exuberant, and he, you know he, he's probably the same way now, just 30 years older. But I can I could see after the fact, after seeing the film, that that is definitely Ted's son. Yeah, you can. I I I uh, when we were on set one time, um, it was like I think towards like later um when we were almost done filming but um uh uh there there was some like little clip that popped up and it was of his dad Mm. and um and i remember i saw i I was just like oh my gosh you know i have one here and then i'm looking and they're really they're very very similar (laughs) like (laughs) their mannerisms and things that it's very similar you put a put long hair on uh, rocco he'd probably look a lot like his dad yeah Oh, he'd do that too. I mean, he, you know, we like our 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 rap gift was. I don't know if I'm not supposed to say this, but um, our rap gift was like, you know, uh, the the last the last shot of of the film, um, or the you know filming process. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, we're we're all like all of us girls are like, at this table, and um, and we're like trying to like, you know, be as serious and committed to like what we're doing and, you know, really like kick this one out of the park and, you know, do everything right. <laughs> and then in the middle of the, the shot, Rocco just like start naked, comes <laughs> sprinting 
behind the the table, like around the kitchen, around the back, and then it was like, and, and me and Tori and uh, oh gosh, that was my I'm oh, sorry, um, uh, and and uh, and Roman Britt, we were just like, what? <laughs> what? What is going on? What's going on here? And then and, uh, and we we're kind of like, is that Rocco? Rocco? Like we're like we freaked out, but it was like really, it was it was the perfect way to kind of you know send everyone off. Cast, crew alike, all of us. Rocco, you know, definitely made it memorable. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, yeah, no, I didn't know about that. That's interesting. <laughs> yeah. Well, he, he's obviously uh, very comfortable with himself. Yeah, he is. He is. He's just, you know, he's a he's a good guy. And, I, you know, I, I'm i going to apologize ahead because I'm going to ask you this, and I, I've been going back and forth in my mind whether I want to actu- actually ask you this, but I'm going to do mm-hmm. it because I don't know. Do you, I mean... Do it. You know, you're, you and you and Rocco both, you know, your parents, your, your dads, pretty famous guys. Is it is it is that intimidating to go into the business that you have? Now he's gone into a slightly different business, but but mm-hmm. you're, you know, you're right there. Is it? Um, is it intimidating? Uh, I mean, yeah, slightly, absolutely. I think er- earlier on it it was, you know, I. Because I, I, you know, I have a lot of respect for, for my dad and for my sister and for my, my, my grandparents and my uncle. And, um, and they're all really, really hard workers and they work hard to, you know, deliver, you know, the best they can. And, you know, while they, while really loving what they do and, um, and, and just growing up on, on, on sets and, um, I was sort of around all these people that kind of you know, the, the people that like make films happen, mm-hmm. um, and these are like you know, if, you know there's there's stereotypical sort of ideas of of um, of Hollywood and all these things, but these are like you know really just to the core hardworking people who who bring their all every single day for months and months and months and then have like a, a little break and then again like months and months and months and um and i don't i you know i want to i think the intimidating factor to me is like is i want to you know i i want to to make sure that i every time feel like i'm bringing that um and and uh and I, almost like it's a show of of appreciation for the fact that I know that they are, and um, so I, I'm a bit top of myself when it comes to that, or not, but in a good way, in a good way. I'm not like you know, like bitch. Um, but uh, that when I when I first got into it, I was I was I was nervous because um, I I just uh, you know I, everyone has a lot of respect for my my family, and I'm and I'm. You know, I'm grateful for it because I think they sh- they should. Um, but no doubt. Uh, you know, <laughs> well, and, you know, what? I'm just doing the math in my head while you're talking about that, and I'm thinking that unlike uh, those of us over a certain age, you probably know your dad best as a guy behind the scenes, and probably mm-hmm. your uncle Clint better, be, you know, as being on screen because you know it's, you're you're 27. I mean, that, that yeah. your dad mo- most of the time since you've been growing growing up. I'm thinking he's been behind this, behind the, the the camera, not in front of it. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, uh, he, he, yeah, I I think that the, you know, <laughs> that's a, that's a, we 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 kind of, the only thing I can say we we sort of grew up on on um on the Andy Griffith Show because mm-hmm. it was a you know. It was, a, it was it had like a lot of good family morals and as did we all. Yeah. I mean, you and, know. Um, you know, I love it. I have I have the the entire you know collection right over there. You just kind of pull it out and, um, but uh, you know, other I, other than that though, I just uh, I can't really I can't really imagine. It's very it's very yeah. My experience with that is is. Pretty much solely seeing him direct. It'd be I, it'd be funny to see him. Well, just for, and just for the record, I I will tell you that I'm old enough to have I'm probably close close 
close to your dad's age. Uh, think about it. Maybe within a couple of years. Um, I'm old enough to have actually seen uh, the the Andy Griffith show when it was airing at night, week week to week. So yeah, when you talk about growing up with the show, definitely. I, I, I can yeah. See that. Um, <laughs> and so was there, you know, uh, and we won't, we won't linger on this too long, but I'm curious, mm -hmm. was there, uh, were, were you and your sister, for example, encouraged to act or discouraged or just did he was, you know, were your parents just kind of neutral about it and let you, Oh gosh, no, no, no. There was, there was definitely no neutrality about it. Oh, um, but, uh, you know, uh, they weren't not supportive, but they, they were very clear about, um, I guess they were very clear about the fact that um, that it, you know, whether we were like, I love it, I want to do this, what, what I want to do with my life. They're like, great, get through school, mm. and um, you have our support. <laughs> but like, and we'll talk about it when you're 18. Here's what you have um, to do to get to that point. Yeah, just get there, and um, you know, get get through high school, and we'll talk about it when you when you when you're heading off to college, and um, and. And that's that. But, you know, I, I think that, uh, you know, we were all kind of, we know it's not like an easy, an, e an easy thing to do, but they, they would constantly remind us and they're like, this is no piece of cake. <laughs> like, <laughs> you need to, you need to really love this to yeah. do it. And, um, and, uh, you know, I, I think just me and Bryce kind of, we got, we, we both got a bug a bit and, um, and, and, and then when they, you know, it, they're they're incredibly supportive, but they didn't want to like you know champion you know, at like five years old be like and take up the family business. Right. Well, <laughs> thank goodness for that. I, I mean, that, it, I'm, I'm I'm grateful for that. And you know, I, I just can't imagine if there was a um, if there was a little uh, a little boy uh, Howard who the expectations on that child to act would have been my brother. Well, but but he didn't act right. No. Okay, so that's what I'm saying. Oh, he was going to act. Oh, he was. Oh no, no, no! You, you're saying if it, if, if he was, was going a, to act, I think that would have been horrible. Act. Yeah, just terrible. Yeah, yeah, that would have been tough. I think that would have been tough. I mean, even even Reed, you know, he's like, there's only so many people like who can who can rub my head at once while I'm in the elevator because he has like bright red hair. Oh, and they're like, oh, me, you know, oh, um, and he's. he's He's like this shy little boy when he, he, he was so small when he was one of the cutest. Anyways, but yeah, he, that would have been tough for him. Yeah, I think we're all glad that he's, you know, into golf. So uh, last question on, on this, and then we'll, we'll just set it aside. What is the – did you either get any very good advice from any, any of the family members ahead of you in the business, or is the best uh, information and direction you got about making a career like this just from being on sets over the years and seeing it done the way your family has done it? Um, you know, I think that I'm, I'm exceptionally lucky because I have had both of those pools to sort of dip into for, for advice and also just to, you know, observe and, um, it's, you know, that, that, I, I don't think anyone, it, like, no one can really argue with that. That's an incredible, incredible, um, help. And it's something that, you know, I, I'm, I'm so grateful for, but I, I do think, um, uh, get, getting advice. I, I'm absolutely, um, you know, if I, if I, if I, if I have a question or if I'm, I will, I won't hesitate to go get advice from Bryce or from my granddad or from my dad. And, um, and Uncle Clint, they don't hesitate to, to get, I, I, I feel like I'm almost like in like a little family of teachers when it comes to that, because they're, they're very, they're very generous, uh, generous with it. Sorry. <laughs> um, and um, and they also uh, and they love what they do. So um, so they're I, you know, I I I I absolutely get advice from all places, all people, all over. I'm just you know swimming in in you know in a bottomless pool of advice. All right. Well, yeah. here's here's one more bit of advice: buy low, sell high. Go with that. Oh, all right. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. I, 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 I just suddenly felt like I had to offer some advice because you're surrounded no, by cause it. No, because I, I mean, I'm, I, that's it. <laughs> now I just jumped in with the rest of my my, my family. My, and is, your, the, uh, is your puppy there? 
He is. Oh my gosh. Riley. Riley. Come here, Mama. He's really cute. <laughs> here, I'm going to put this right here. Okay. It's like a really cute little munchkin. Is he? Hey, Riley. Riley, come here. Come here. Okay. He was taking a nap. Oh. Oh, he'll, he'll make me pay for this. Oh, look at him. He's a golden doodle, I think you said? He's a golden doodle. <laughs> how, old, how old is he? Oh, look at that. He's like, um, he is a year. He actually just turned a year. He's like the sweetest little boy. When he came into the screen, I suddenly, I suddenly felt like I was doing one of those Edward R. Murrow person of persons, you know? It's like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> look at him. He's, He's so like cute. really... He's like, he's like, scratch my legs, scratch my legs. <laughs> uh, if, only, if only he knew how many of us were sharing this moment with him. <laughs> I know, I know. That Thank God he so doesn't. He never will. <laughs> oh, my God. And I'm sorry, how old is he? A year. A year. Oh, he's so cute. Yeah, so he's, he's oh, my God, he is, he is an absolute terror. He's like a little monster, but he's so cute. Wait till you see the video of how big his his back paws look on screen I know. oh it's my just... god he's like sasquatch <laughs> i know he is he <laughs> is how funny yeah he's a, he's a good dog you have dogs as well right i do i have a, a yellow lab and a uh, a little terrier mix uh we oh. we call the little guy a, a jackalope he used to when he was younger he could oh. jump he could do a six foot vertical leap so he could see over the fence and into the yard next door oh my gosh that's great yeah it's kind of a He's got a, a little character you've got over there. Little talent, yep, little talent. Ooh. We, uh, you know, we. He should probably do well when he was younger. He probably should have done stupid pet tricks or something, you know. Yeah, I mean, it sounds like he could really pull that off. He's got some 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 back legs on him or something. Oh, right? he does. He's a strong little guy. He's a good dog. Best oh. smartest dog I've ever had. Yeah. So, all right. So we'll come back around to business here. Mm -hmm. Uh, let's take a minute and talk about Virgin Alexander. Uh, t tell me a little about the movie and uh, your role in it. Um, well, uh, the movie is about a boy who, um, well, uh, like a young man who is uh, 26 and he is still a virgin. No. Um, <laughs> yes. No. That, that uh, this is fiction, and, right? Because that never happens. No, never. <laughs> um, but... Uh, but um, so he's given this um, this house, you know, uh, like the I think the deed to his house uh, by his grandfather, mm -hmm. and um, he finds and then his grandfather like just disappears, and um, and he finds out that it is uh, he's he he uh, like he owes an incredible amount of money on the house that he's now accountable for it because he signed the paper with his, and so he's kind of like, well, how am I going to go and figure this out? You know, I don't, um, like I, he's like a trash, he, he's a trash man. Mm -hmm. So, um, so he kind of, his, his, like his interest is spiked by, um, my character and, uh, uh, Liz Masucci and Mika Borum, um, their characters, uh, we're all like good friends, and uh, and uh, I guess just like you know pro prostitutes. Um, and, <laughs> That's the word. <laughs> <laughs> um, it, it, it really, there's really no way to go around that one. Um, but um, so what? So he kind of like starts to follow me, and I, I think he's very odd. And um, and uh, he has his, like his best friend. It has been brainstorming with him, like how we're going to go and take care of this problem. And um, and when he sees me, because I'm like dressed in incredibly tight clothing, um, he he's like, oh my god, they should like you know just have a, like a brothel set up at our house, and then we can like rent it out to them, and um, we can all just make like make a ton of money, and then it's taken care of. And um, and so then Rich, uh, uh, well Alexander, um. He's like, oh, you know, I don't know about this. Blah, blah. And um, and I want to get out of the, like, our, our pimp, <laughs> Bronson Pinchot, um, is awful. And I want to go to school and kind of, like, get out of this. And 
So then we agreed to kind of take on this endeavor. It obviously doesn't work out. Things go awry and all these. But then some, you know, really beautiful relationships are formed. You, you meant to say uh, Bronson, Bronson Pimpo, right? Not Pincho. Ah. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, did, I, did I misspeak that? No. no. <laughs> Bronson Pimpo. And that's why I'm in Florida and you're out in Hollywood. Oh, no. uh, <laughs> so it's a comedy. <laughs> It is. It's a comedy. It's okay. a comedy. It's a. It's like a. It's a romantic comedy. Got it. All right. It and, was. It was so much fun. And that one, uh, I think. Let me find my note here. That one is out J- June twenty second or July twenty second. I'm trying to. Oh, I think I think July twenty oh. second because today is June twenty second. Okay, street date July seventeenth. Literally, folks, I got this in the mail today. I did not expect to be discussing this. Yeah. So that part was not well prepared. <laughs> you know. Now, you've got uh, at least one other movie this year? Oh, yeah. Um, well, I just, I, uh, I, did, I did a movie called The Employer with, um, uh, directed by Frank Merle with, um, <laughs> oh, sorry. Was someone... He was feeding you the line. I I don't know if he was trying to say. I, I think he might be right, actually. Um, he's like names, Paige, names. <laughs> you, you remember your names. I have a horrible block with names. Um, uh, but uh, directed by Frank Murrow, um, with and David. I love you. Please, if you see this, don't get mad at me. Um, David Damascium, Mischium. I can't Damascium. I don't know. What, I will never say his last name to him. But good old David D. I remember him well. Yeah, that's what I call him, David D. David D. Like in my phone, everything. Um, I just won't even attempt it, but I didn't know. I'm kind of regretting it. <laughs> um, and uh, and Malcolm McDowell. Oh. Uh, it, it, just a bunch of really, really incredible, in, incredible you know actors, and Frank is outstanding. And um, you know that was that was that was a really that was a really awesome film to do. No, um, comedy or drama? Uh, like a more of like a psychological thriller. Oh, okay. You know, line horror film yeah yeah and then um uh and then i'm getting ready to do a film coming up here um called prairie bones uh, directed by connie stevens connie the connie stevens the connie stevens wow yeah it's it's really exciting she she's she's awesome how did that come about that's interesting on on so many Um, points i think what happened was i um i I went back for like a mix and match. Uh, what is that? Uh, with these a mix and match, just like a, you spend like a couple hours uh, for some sort of uh, casting calls. Like you know when you when you go in, they they'll pick like couples. Oh. You know, like they 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 think these two two guys could really work, and um, they like these two girls, but they also want to see kind of what you know. It's like a chemistry kind of matching thing. See how that works. Yeah. Um, uh, is and it, so, so it, they're they're trying to say is it David and Maddie or is it Joni and Chachi, right? Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, sorry, sorry to interrupt. No, that's exactly it, though. That's exactly it. Um, or you know, for if, if if there's just like one singular, which in this case it was because I didn't get the job, <laughs> but um, <laughs> but it was uh, an audition. Um, uh, they, they need to see like, do do we want this to be played a bit younger, or do we want it to be kind of more like, yeah young adults mm. and so i think that that was kind of um just that's that's they just use it for all sorts of things like that so um i was with them for like a couple hours uh in their hair you know just <laughs> hanging out uh auditioning um and uh and uh and i guess i guess uh i don't know if they saw the tapes or what what happened but um but they just they called me up for a meeting, and um, and then that was that was they. I mean, that was it. So I just, yeah, it was like it was really, really, it was really amazing. Can you tell us anything about the role? That you're- yeah, I can. I can. It's um, well, Melissa Leo, isn't it? And um, and Danny Glover as well. Melissa's been on the show. Oh, really? Yep. Yeah, I've never met her, and I'm really excited. I'm I'm excited to meet them both because I have so much respect for. Uh, well, everyone who's working on this film is unbelievable. Um, but uh, it's it's uh, about a young couple uh, who are who are sort of uh, 
that's not what I'm supposed to say. Well, I mean, they, um, a young couple who, who fall in love, sort of like the, the aftermath of, of the Civil War and the Underground Railroad and things like that. Mm-hmm. And to, to get people up, you know, up north, they, they sort of, even after, after the war, they serve as like, um, uh, or the person that's my, you know, my, my love interest, uh, his, his mother, Melissa Leo, um, and him kind of just, uh, sort of spirit had this, this underground railroad like thing that was very much a real thing. Um, and, and for money though, get, get people from the South to, to the North. Um, and then I, 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 you know, I kind of become part of the family, and and we fall in love, and we get married, and um, and uh, and then um, there are just a lot of trials and triumphs, and things that, and and just uh, some just major challenges that were very much so, um, you know, uh, uh, uh you know, a r- very um. Very much so part of like a just all. I mean, well, there's a, there's a series of things that go on. Um, I don't even, uh, but but it's kind of just about them getting through it together, and you know, and it's it's a love story. So so uh, just to put this in perspective for people who may not see this within a couple of days. Uh, we're talking on the day that. Uh, uh, Abraham Lincoln Vampire Hunter opens in theaters. You're talking about doing the Civil War movie. Are there any vampires in this movie? Will we see any, you know, any any blood sucking? Because you know it's the big thing now, so it's got to yeah, be in every I movie. Yeah, I don't think that. I don't think that's in the script as of yet. Wow. Okay. I can't, you know, think of any particular place where that would fit in. <laughs> but you know, I don't know. Vampires, they are the. The hot thing. Well, you know, I mean, if they could, uh, they could, they could, they could, if they could connect vampires and Abraham Lincoln, I figure it's, it's a perfect world. Yeah, it's going to be yeah. a, a, pretty much every story. That's it, blockbuster to the max. <laughs> well, listen, um, you, you, it's been it's been wonderful to get to know you today, and I feel like we have gotten to know you because we've spent so much time. <laughs> okay, thank you so much. We got to we got to see your dog, and you know. Uh, I I, uh, I will tell you that I, I'm I'm going to guess at some point uh, we saw your boyfriend uh, behind you. Uh, yes. Yeah. We the mirror. We just yeah. Oh, then he was in front of you, but behind you. Okay. Yeah. There it, you go. I didn't know it was a mirror. I just thought it was a doorway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh my gosh! He just he was like, oh no. <laughs> uh, it's fine. It's fine. Uh, and I, so we want to I want to tell everybody that you can find uh, y- you can download Cheesecake Casserole, starring the very lovely uh, Paige Howard. Uh, it's on uh, Video On Demand, VOD, uh, or iTunes, or uh, you can get it here at MrMedia.com, all on July 3rd. You can download it from any of those places. Uh, can people find you? Do you have a, a website, a Twitter, Facebook, any of that kind of stuff? Um, I'm, on, I'm on Twitter, just Paige Howard, um, and, then, uh, and then I'm on Facebook. I'm not great at the whole Facebook thing. I mean, I'm not really great at the Twitter, but I, I am probably more on Twitter than I am on Facebook, so. Okay. All right, so people can find you if they want to. Find me. Yeah, you're, 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 all right. The more the merrier. All right. Well, uh, Paige, uh, it's been a delight having you here today. Uh, oh, thank you. Yeah, thank you so much. Had a really so. good time. Well, you're welcome. And uh, thanks for putting up with all the silly questions along with the serious questions. And uh, most of all, just thank you for being on Mr. Media. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Pleasure. I don't know. <laughs> you're good. <laughs> You can see and hear almost a thousand Mr. Media interviews by visiting our main site, mrmedia.com, mrmedia.com. Or check out the more than 200 video interviews on the Mr. Media radio site on YouTube. And I'd sure appreciate if you'd show some love for Mr. Media's advertisers, including Stitcher. Apple named Stitcher a top five news app of 2011. It's a free mobile app for your smartphone or tablet that lets you listen to your favorite shows and discover the best of news, entertainment, and sports on demand. You can listen whenever you want to to more than 5,000 shows, get customized recommendations, and discover what your friends are listening to. My own list of Stitcher favorites is pretty eclectic. I start my day with an hour of MSNBC's Morning Joe with Joe Scarborough and Mika Brzezinski. 
Then it's the latest two-minute update from the Onion News Network. After that, I'll listen to WTF with Mark Marin. Here's The Thing with Alec Baldwin, HBO's Real Time with Bill Maher, and excerpts from E's Chelsea Lately and The Soup with Joel McHale. Also in regular rotation on my Stitcher playlist, The BS Report with ESPN's Bill Simmons, The Tech Crunch Headlines, and The Don Geronimo Show. The latest episodes of each show, whether originating from broadcasts, cable TV, radio syndication, or podcasts, are continuously updated. Stitcher is a free app for your iPhone, iPad, Kindle, Fire, BlackBerry, Droid, and more. And show your support of Mr. Media by getting, did I mention it's free? The app at stitcher.com slash Mr. Media. That's stitcher.com slash MR Media. Stitcher Smart Radio, the smarter way to listen to radio. We're also supported by Audible. Check out Audible's 30-day trial membership and download the audiobook version of the book everyone's been talking about, Fifty Shades of Grey by E.L. James. Sign up for your free trial today at audible.com slash radio. Again, audibletrial.com slash radio. And finally, if you need a disc jockey for a wedding, bar mitzvah, corporate event, or just a big old party, please consider calling 1-800-DIAL-DJs, the party authority, for all your party entertainment needs. You can call 1-800-DIAL-DJs or go to their website, 1-800-DIAL-DJs.com, and tell them Mr. Media sent you. And thanks for listening.